again. And I'm looking at her like, are you serious? Like, I literally didn't bid you up on the other set. I told you, and I was very nice about it. <laughs> and then you... What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Over the Years. It is very sunny where I am. I'll try this. No. No. Nope. There we go. Uh, welcome back to Over the Years. If you guys aren't subscribed, subscribe, hit a thumbs up. We just pulled up to the auction house. Uh, we're going to an in-person auction tonight. We have not done this in a very long time, um, but we're going to try our best, see what we can have. Uh, we have a very tight budget tonight, so... This is going to take a lot of meticulous planning here. We got my notepad. I'm going to go do a preview walkthrough right now. And we got about an hour and a half till the auction starts. So hopefully things go according to plan. We'll take you guys through the auction house when we get there. And um, then uh, we'll see how it goes. So stay tuned. Should be a lot of fun. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are walked walking through the auction now as the preview started picked up those cards thought there might have been something in there there was a lot of this really nice costume jewelry you guys know i love my brooches um i didn't get any, even to get a chance to bid into that but there's people there that are just like crazy jewelry people so all that stuff went pretty expensive so uh this next table i stopped uh there's a couple of little pieces here obviously you see me look at this roller derby skateboard uh this was something that i had in mind as far as picking up uh at this auction i saw it in the preview pictures and i had already comped it uh at first i didn't think it had the wheels from the preview pictures but when i got there i realized it had the wheels um and it was definitely something that i wanted but i got outbid on up next <clears throat> there was some sports cards here um sometimes sports cards can go really cheap at in-person auctions and other times they go for a lot of money this was a fantastic binder now listen there wasn't any very big names in there there were a couple of big names in there but the condition of these 1970s basketball cards were pretty darn good. I want to say that this ended up going for somewhere, I think it was $170, $180, which I guess is not actually, actually not that bad. Um, but for me, I was obviously in no place to be spending $170 <laughs> on that binder. Now, if there would have been some bigger names in there, I might have uh, dabbled in it uh, just so I would have known that I would have been able to get my money back. But unfortunately, I went through all the pages just uh, to... <clears throat> excuse me just to make sure that there weren't any big names in there but um yeah and then there was a couple of loose 90s cards here on the table uh but nothing that really stood out to me for what they were going to be selling for at the auction <laughs> this table was b bananas this table was a lot of railroad stuff. Man, the auctions for those, they were going for crazy money. Now, this is the first table where I had like multiple things I was looking at. Obviously, love this pink glass cat. Uh, that was something I was going to write down. That bowl next to it had a pretty big chip in it, so I passed on that. Uh, there was the vase that I'm picking up right now uh, that we did end up bidding on. And that Pyrex set... It was three of the sunflower bowls. All three had lids. Uh, I tried to get that, but it ended up selling for $45. This, like, chemistry bottle set was pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, that stuff went for bonkers money. Um, unfortunately, it just wasn't uh, in my price range. Uh, but there was some cool stuff in there on that table for sure. Over at this table, this wooden tripod was really interesting. That's like you, like in the middle of the table. I, I noticed obviously this Fenton glass coin dot optic cranberry uh, hat. 
<clears throat> tried to get that and I actually I tried to get this Fenton Ebony um I forget what they call it it's like a cookie jar of some sort I tried to get both of those so I put them together um the bid ended up going like 25 30 dollars so I ended up missing out on those two items unfortunately I thought by putting them together I would have snuck by some people but unfortunately it did not work I mean this auction has a lot of stuff um this is last time I was there it was even more than this I looked at these uh art glass fishes I wasn't too sure on them they look like they might have been uh made in China but I did end up bidding on those two cranberry glass pieces that were on the table and that's kind of what I wrote down on my notepad there over here there was some cool radios. Uh, missed out on all of those. Uh, there was also a lot of Pyrex dishes, which I did try to bid on. Uh, those ended up going for more money than I wanted to pay for them. I was at this table, though, because originally there was some paperweights I saw in the preview show, and they weren't here when I came back to the actual walkthrough. Uh, there was those two pieces of Fostoria glass on this table the vaseline glass one on the left hand corner and then there was a blue one on that table as well i also tried to bid on those but unfortunately i was outbid by a pretty large amount <laughs> that sounds really familiar something along those lines i i don't know that stuff that's one of the reasons why pardon me now this Murano bottle was pretty interesting. It did have the Murano sticker on there as well. Uh, unfortunately, there was a chip on it, so I ended up passing on that. I did spot the Flow Blue plate as well. I kind of regret not picking that up. It did have some chips on it. I was a little bit sidetracked and missed out on that plate, unfortunately. This was a Flow Blue teapot, but I think this was actually a reproduction. Um, it had a funky large back stamp on the base of that. And typically when they have those large stamps, uh, they are reproductions and not originals. This table had some interesting stuff on it. I did want to try and lot up all these dogs on the table. There was also a box of the dogs on the table as well, but uh, another woman beat me to that idea and took all the dogs and <clears throat> wanted in an auction that was larger than what I wanted to pay. I did end up bidding on that entire lot of uranium glass in the middle of this table. As you can see, there's that box of dogs. There's a couple other animals in there. Uh, unfortunately, I did not get the dogs. I always try to buy dogs. As you can see, I just wrote down dogs on, a, on my uh, notepad. <laughs> um, there was a super rad, all pink mid-century modern set in that cabinet over there. That went for a lot of bucks. This table was nuts. The alcohol and the Christmas ornaments went crazy. There was a bottle on that table that sold for $800 plus dollars. This little dish was interesting. It was definitely very old, probably late 1800s, made by Davenport. Uh, I looked it up. Couldn't find any comps on it. Uh, probably would have been a long tail item, so I ended up not messing with that. This table is where I did some Wedgwood there, but it was all the regular colored Jasperware stuff. I did spot uh, paperweight here at this table, as well as that Canon camera. Uh, we'll talk about that Canon camera in a little bit later in the video, but definitely wrote down a couple of items on that table as well. <laughs> Here I spotted that red compote uh, right there in the middle of the table to the left of my hand. That was uh, made by Imperial Glass. I lost out on that one as well. I think it ended up going for like 20 bucks. Here is where we find uh, the Fenton hobnail uh, vase, and we definitely bid on that, as well as that other marigold carnival glass vase you see on that table. Uh, another item that we definitely bid on. 
There's a Pyrex primary bull set right there that ended up going for about 40 bucks also. So it was out of my range in which I was willing to pay for it. Didn't really spot anything first time around at that table. Um, we got into some tools over here. Didn't really find anything at either one of these tables. Uh, I always do a multiple walkthroughs when I do the preview and then throughout the uh, the auction as well. Once I kind of get a vibe of who's bidding on what, uh, definitely might double take and, and take a, a, a grab at some things at the end if I can bundle some stuff together. That Colt's helmet, I definitely bid on that bad boy. There's a box of salt and pepper shakers right there. I came back to this table hoping I'd see <laughs> those paperweights. I was really looking for those paperweights. Unfortunately, I uh, just never found them. They were pulled for the next auction. Uh, there's some of that blue Fostoria uh, heirloom piece I was telling you guys about earlier. Those postcards went for crazy money too. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the auction. I can't find my slipper. We are back from the auction, as you all can see. We grabbed some stuff. Oh, where did I put the helmet? Oh, can't forget the helmet. I was about ready to clean this, and then I was like, oh, let me film this portion of the video really fast. Yeah, I'm going to clean this helmet. So I did grab the Colts helmet. We'll just start there. Uh, I paid $5 for that. Uh, as you guys can see, we did pick up a bunch of other stuff as well. We got this beautiful cat, which I have not been able to properly identify yet. I don't think it's Fenton. Um, so I'm going to work on trying to figure out exactly where this cat is from. Um, let me turn you guys around really fast. Just like that. So yeah, so we did pick up this cat um beautiful cranberry glass right here that we got so we picked these two up together as one lot and we were in at five dollars this is definitely older cranberry glass beautiful optic as you guys and gals can see and then we picked up this beautiful optic cranberry decanter as well so very very nice cranberry glass and we cleaned up all this stuff already, so we picked up a whole bunch of uranium glass sherbets and some cups and a sugar bowl. Uh, we also picked up some glass, uh, some plates that got thrown in the deal as well. This was bought in two different lots. Uh, these will probably put together and uh, send off to the auction house to sell. Um, unless anybody's interested in these, I think they're optic anchor anchor hawking optic block plates. If anybody's interested in those, just let me know. This is awesome though. So we picked up this uh, French crystal paperweight, Charles Lindenberg. Look at this. Look how beautiful that is, man. Really pretty piece. Very pretty. I thought the box was really cool too. Um, it says that this is limited to 415 copies and it's very Mission Impossible. This mold will be destroyed after completion of this edition. So I picked that up as well with the box. Uh, beautiful 8 inch Fenton hobnail, blue opalescent hobnail. Double crimped vase. Very nice. I threw a comp up on the screen for that. Uh, we actually got this with that vase together for $15. I'll break down all the numbers and the math, but absolutely beautiful. Just in case. I forgot to put a comp up on the screen for that. There's not. A, it's very interesting. I saw some that sold for, for different prices. I put a listing uh, up on the screen of some that are listed right now. Uh, this is a beautiful vase right here. 
So this is um, Marigold Carnival Glass. This is made by, um, oh my gosh, Imperial Glass Company. The name of the pattern is Beaded Bullseye. If you guys didn't know, I bought a couple of these in um, Amethyst a few years back. There's a video on my YouTube channel about it. And they sold for like 250 bucks each. Now that's color made it a lot more valuable. Uh, this particular one, uh, probably like 40 to $60 in value. Uh, but absolutely gorgeous uh, piece right there. And then we also picked up another Carnival Glass vase. This is made by Dugan Glass Company. The name of this pattern is called Target. It is also in the marigold color. So we picked up all of that at the auction. And of course the cat and the Colts football helmet. And we spent a grand total of $67.05. So I think it's 28 items in total. So it's a little bit under like around $3 per item. So I was, it, you know, we're going to flip you guys around and we'll talk about what to, how the auction actually went. But uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I really like these cranberry pieces. I think this is a great piece. Um, obviously the two vases, the Fenton uh, is a, definitely a find and the helmet as well. So I'm going to flip you all around really fast and then we'll talk about how the auction went itself. And we're back. So, I will tell you all, the auction experience, move you guys a little bit. The auction experience was pretty wild. Um, I haven't been there in a long time. It's a lot of people that go there every auction. So there's a lot of like clicks and stuff like that. Um, one of my, f my friends from when I used to set up at Georgetown Flea Market, uh, Enzo, he was there and he showed up and I was like, thank God, somebody I can talk to. But uh, the reason why I didn't film during the auction um, is because when I was there filming during the walkthrough, there were people complaining. People were not happy that I was wearing a GoPro. They were not happy that I was recording. Some guy said it's against the law and, you know, it's... I didn't want to make a whole big deal about it. I didn't want to, you know, just come in there and piss everybody off. And I'm sure I probably could have worn it. But the last thing I wanted to do was somebody to complain to the people working at the auction. And then the auction people coming to me and then everybody being upset with me. So I made the executive decision to just stop recording, um, you know, <laughs> and there was a I was on a very tight budget. There's a couple of items there that I really wanted to get. Uh, that I got beat out on, and I talk about that during the during the um, the walkthrough, and the you know I, I probably could have spent a little bit more money, but I decided that I don't know the camera. I lost out on the Canon camera. I'll put that up there. That ended up going for like twenty five dollars. It, it's it would have been a hundred twenty dollars sale. I I think that guy the guy told me though that. After I he bought it, I was like, "Yeah, it's a nice camera." I was like, "You probably get 120 for it." He's like, "Oh no, nah, I can I can get like 300." And I was like, "Well," so at that point, it made me think, "Okay, don't be so upset about that because he probably would have gone up to like 80 dollars." And like my max, I probably would have paid for that thing would have probably would have been like 40 dollars, maybe more, most likely 30. Let's be honest. So I wasn't that upset about that. The ones there's a the Pyrex sets went for a lot of money, um. So I you know I kind of got outbid on those to the point where it wasn't worth it for me, and then the other couple of other items that were out of my price range because they started getting into like the twenty dollars. Like I paid five dollars to for ev everything except for two lots. I think went for fifteen dollars, but it was two items in each lot. And then the uranium glass was big lots of it. So, I, I, you know, I ended up paying like around $3 per item, which is not bad. Uh, there was some etched glass stemware there that I really wanted. And this lady was going to bid on it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to let the lady have this one. I'll get the next one. You know, I was chatting her up. I was being very nice. You know, that that's just the person that I am. I guess I should have been a little bit more like battle hungry at this auction. 
<laughs> but if I had more money, I maybe where I would have been a little bit more battle hungry. But you know, the I let the lady have the stemware. It was Cambridge Rose Point. It was probably like a hundred twenty dollars set. She got it for five dollars. Nobody else even bid. So then I was like, all right, the next set I'll I'll take. So then I go to the next set. I give it to the auctioneer to run for me. They start the bidding at $5. I'm like, all right, I'm about to get this. The lady bids. And then I bid. And then she bids again. And I'm looking at her like, are you serious? Like, I literally didn't bid you up on the other set. I told you. And I was very nice about it. <laughs> and then you, I, it was, it was, I give, it really showed me how you have to be at these auctions. Nobody is your friend. Except for Enzo. Shout out Enzo. Enzo's my guy. So yeah, so that was the auction experience. Um, I might go back again. I really went because I wanted to go see these paperweights. I don't know if I have a picture. If I have a picture, I'll put it up there. But they pulled the paperweights out of this auction and they were putting it in the auction. Now it's happening the next day, which is like more of like a sit down auction. And it's going to those they're gonna go for crazy money, probably. So all in all, it was an experience. Uh, it's good to be back. And uh, I did get some items. That will hopefully be auctioning off in our own live auction uh, coming up here shortly. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We appreciate all the love and all the support as always. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And uh, just make sure you're following us on Instagram. Make sure you guys and gals are you know paying attention to the community YouTube chat. Uh, as we will be doing a couple of live auctions moving forward. Um, we will be doing, uh, some one-stop shop stuff. If you guys aren't members there already. And in my debut auction on crazy lamp ladies, uh, platform knickknacks will be coming up soon as well. So I'll be announcing all that stuff as we get closer to those dates, but we appreciate all the love and all support. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day, evening, afternoon, whatever time it may be when you're watching this video, but most importantly, stay classy YouTube. Peace.